Good afternoon and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Uh, we got a, another hot day in Beulah today, so I'm not actually running the forge this afternoon. Instead, I've been doing bench work and working on hinges and things like that, trying to get them out. So lots of filing and punching holes, things that I don't have to go to the forge for. It seems like I get lots of questions about tongs. What style of tong were you using in this video or that video? And there are lots of styles of tongs out there. We've looked at making some basic tongs. We have made flat jaw tongs by a few different methods that did not require you have tongs. We have done a video on how to weld the reins onto the tong jaw to make flat jaw tongs. And we have made some slotted jaw tongs. And slotted jaw tongs are like this set here. And they, they allow you to hold something on edge. They will hold square bar, round bar, flat bar, and they work to some extent like a regular pair of flat jaw tongs. Really a very useful set of tongs. And this is one people ask about a lot. And I did a video on, on making these, so it might be worth looking at that. But most of these other styles, other than the, the flat jaw tongs, we haven't actually addressed in a video. So I'm just going to talk about what style of jaws they are, why they're called what they are, if I can think of a reason, and explain just a little bit about what they are. But in most of these cases, at some point, we will make a version of these tongs. I can probably spend a whole year just making tongs and never make the same pair of tongs twice, but I probably don't have the time to do that, so tongs are going to come out a pair here, a pair there, so if you want to see all these made, you're going to have to stick around for a few years and keep watching the videos. Another pair of tongs that are a lot like flat jaw tongs are the wolf jaw tongs. The wolf jaw tongs are sort of a round or square stock tong in this area. And then they have these different teeth or notches that tend to hold different sizes of round bar. So they're another kind of universal. They hold square and round lengthwise, some flat stock lengthwise, and then various things at an angle. A very useful, very practical pair of tongs. This pair was actually made from a pair of Ken's Custom Iron uh, Quick Tongs, I think. A very useful style of tong are box jaw tongs. This box on the end here helps keep material from sliding out sideways, which is the real problem with flat jaw tongs, but then it's got a jaw that holds it. And these need to be sized for the material that you want, both thickness and width. So if you have a big selection of flat jaw tongs, you can hold a lot of stuff, but it takes a lot. If you're doing quarter by three quarter, quarter by one, quarter by one and a quarter, quarter by one and a half, so on and so forth, and then the same sizes in five sixteenths, three eighths, and half inch, that's a lot of box jaw tongs, but they are perhaps one of the most useful for holding flat stock. For holding square and round bar, I like the, this style of tongs. Technically, these are called a bolt tong because they're made to have clearance for a bolt head. That's also handy for hooks and things like that. A lot of people these days just refer to them as a V-bit tong, but in my opinion, a V-bit tong is essentially what these wolf jaw tongs would be if they didn't have this, the teeth in the side. They don't have this open area in a typical V-bit tong. Doesn't really matter, you can call them whatever you want, and they serve the same purpose. This opening in the bolt tong makes them much more useful, which is why I don't have any of the other style of V-bit tong. And some of these also then come with a side notch, which makes them even more useful so you can hold things from the side. So that's a very useful tongs. And this particular pair is from Off Center Tool Works, and I think they're available from the Blacksmith's Depot if you're looking for a pair of tongs like this. They're out there available commercially. But at some point, we will make a version of these, just like we'll make a version of all these. Now, when we look at those tongs, I frequently get comments on these tongs. These are essentially the same thing, either a V-bit or a bolt tong. But these are some that 
were demonstrated by Rob Gunter at one point at a blacksmithing conference, and he referred to them as pause tongs. If I remember correctly, he said that a blacksmith named Daryl Posniak, I hope I got that name right, had found an old pair of tongs like this and figured out how to make them, so they just started calling them pause tongs. And these are made, simp in this size anyways, from quarter by one inch flat bar. They're a little bit fiddly to make, but they're really a nice pair of tongs, and we will certainly cover this. Now they're pause tongs. Other people have made them. This is a pair that was made by a friend of mine who has since passed away. And so it's sort of a memento of some of his work. Same idea, but not quite exactly the same. And this is a pair that was made by Rob Gunther's sons, Chad and Brad. And at one point, the three of them were running a business called G3 Tools. I think they are so busy doing custom ornamental ironwork now that they are no longer making tools. But if they're out there, they make an excellent set of pause tongs. But again, they're more or less a bolt tong or V-bit tong. Just a very nicely designed, lightweight, compact version. I really like using this style pair of tongs whenever I can. But they mostly just work on square and round bar. They don't work real well for flat bar, but they will to some extent. Another flat bar, this is sort of a modified box jaw. I'm not sure exactly what they call them with the slot running this way. They're kind of handy, but I don't see them in a lot of different sizes. These ones are a Tom Tongs, which would have come from Centaur Forge. And I don't know if they still make those. I think regular box jaw tongs really work just about as well. This is a pair of bent tongs, or knee tongs, you frequently hear them called. And they're for holding things this way, like an axe head. So they're very useful for that kind of work. They would be useful for holding rings and hoops as well. And this is a pair, a pair that I made. And again, we will make something just like that. But also called hoop tongs or ring tongs. Sometimes I get confused on which is which, and it doesn't really matter, as long as you know what you want them to do. It's the same concept, but the, the bend is going the other direction. And this is good if you're making big hoops for barrels or wagon wheels or something like that. You need to be able to grab it from the side. Now these are chain makers tongs. And these allow you to, to hold a chain link way at the back here and leave the weld out where you can get to it without getting your tongs in your way. And they would have to be sized for each size stock you're making chain out of. These are actually for half inch and this is a 3 8 chain so they don't actually hold it. These may have been chain makers tongs originally, it's hard to say. They may also be rivet tongs. Rivet tongs are essentially the same thing. They're just made to hold a rivet uh, more in uh, construction trades when they were building bridges and skyscrapers with rivets. Not really a blacksmith thing. So these would be good chain makers tongs. It's just an old pair I've collected somewhere. This one's stamped Atha Tools. Now this thing, with these pads like this, this is a hammer eye tong, and it's meant to get inside the eye of a hammer or a punch or something like that. And they're, these are big. This, this is a fairly good size head here, and they don't fit, because this is a big pair of tongs. They're an old pair that I scrounged up somewhere. Dropping stuff off the workbench. But they can be a handy pair of tongs. And there are other hammer-eye tongs. There are some that are made Brian Brazil style. You see Alex Steele use them. I think I've seen Joey Vandersteeg use them. Look very intriguing. I need to make a pair one of these days, but I haven't gotten around to it. These kind of flat round tongs are called farrier's tongs. They work for flat stock just fine, but apparently farriers must like them, so that's why they get that name. But they can be useful in the blacksmith shop. They, one of their advantages is they 
because of the short jaw, they have more leverage right here. The longer your jaw gets, the less leverage you have. This is a style of pickup tongs, and these are frequently called power hammer tongs, and they're very good for manipulating stock under a power hammer. This one looks like it's uh, had a stray whack there because the jaw is kind of bent, so I need to fix that. And then there's a more conventional pair of pickup tongs. And these are just a lightweight pair of tongs. They're just meant for picking stuff up out of the fire, or if you're working in a gas forge, you need to fish something out that you can't quite get into. These have longer handles. Like I said, they're light. They're not meant for forging. They're just meant for grabbing stuff, picking stuff up off the floor, fishing around in the slack tub, unfortunately, sometimes. Just whatever you need to use, but not the best for forging. There's a huge variety of tongs out there. Everybody that makes tongs makes their own version of a style that's fairly typical. And a lot of those start to look the same, but a lot of them seem to be different even though they are essentially the same, if that makes any sense. So we're going to look at making tongs off and on for years to come, I suspect. And we're going to make a lot of different varieties of tongs. I'm going to also make tongs different ways. So far we've looked at all done by hand at the anvil. I'm going to do some under the power hammer. I'll do some where the power hammer just assists, but a lot of the forming is still done at the anvil. We may even try and do some under the uh, hydraulic press. And there is probably a way to do tongs under the treadle hammer and maybe even the fly press. I'll try to think how to incorporate those things just to explore those tools and how they might help us make tongs. But most of them, because I know a lot of you don't have those tools, we will do most of our tong making by hand at the anvil. And we will do a lot of them that will have forge welded reins, because if you're working by hand, that really is the easiest way to go. Technically more difficult, but physically a lot easier and a lot quicker than drawing the reins out by hand. So if you haven't watched the video on forge welding tong reins, this is a good time to go do that. I'll link to it right up here. I hope that answers the questions people have had about what kind of a pair of tongs is that? What are those called? Of course, the next time you see them in a video, you will have either not watch this video or you will have forgotten about this video. So if you want to know what kind of tongs I was using, yeah, put that comment down there in the comment section. I'll try to remember what they were and answer your question for you. I have probably talked about all I can at this point on tongs. That's as eloquent as I can get. I know it gets a little bit tedious to just sit here and talk about a single tool for half an hour, but I think it does help and we start to understand what the variety is and what's out there. And for folks who don't have this stuff available readily, they start to see the big picture. In my shop, I probably have close to 100 pairs of tongs. Most of them don't get used on a regular basis or get used very rarely because I bought them at an antique store because the price was right. Some of the tongs live in the shed across the way and they only get fished out if I'm really desperate for them. But that's not a bad way to go either. If you can find cheap tongs, sometimes you can reforge the old tongs if they aren't too far gone. And sometimes you get lucky and you find a pair for five bucks at a yard sale that will actually do the job for you. We will get back to hot work. I will try to make that a priority for the next video. Uh, I'm looking at doing a draw knife very soon, so maybe we'll start that. It may take several days to film a video on a draw knife, so it may not... I may actually start it tomorrow, but not, not have it finished for a couple of days, so we may still have to fill in. But we will get started on that. We've got a lot of suggestions that people have thrown out there, things like fire steels, we'll do that. And of course, we're going to make tongs again in the, the near future. We're going to make uh, dies for the smithing magician or the guillotine tool. Lots of die possibilities, lots of stuff to do, lots of things to keep our interest for the next few months. We will get back to hot work, we will get back to forging. Stay tuned, we've got lots of exciting stuff ahead. In the meantime, give it a thumbs up if you can. Love it if you hit the subscribe button. Take your time to watch a few of the older videos where we did do some hot work. Share the videos with your friends. But then try to find time in your day to get out to your shop, 
spend some quality time out there, learn something, practice your skills, challenge your imagination, but do stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and in this hot weather, remember to stay hydrated. We'll see you later.